Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I bring you guys my Unchained Deck Profile 2023 post. Uh, really nothing to be honest, we just got a new support revealed, and I felt like this is the best way to do a deck profile until the new cards come out, to see what are the potential this deck already has, teach you what the cards do, and go from there. So first things first, we gotta be playing one Unchained Soul Disaster. Uh, this card is amazing. Uh, if you don't know, Unchained is... The whole gimmick of this deck is that they have two gimmicks. One, they like being destroyed and they like destroying your cards. So the whole gimmick of this deck is when they're destroyed by card effects, they float into other monsters. Which is really, really cool. They're also, their other gimmick is that their link monsters link climb using your opponent's monsters. Which is really, really cool. So, uh, really, really interesting effects. This guy kind of supplements both those. So, well, first things first, he gains attack. Uh, 300 attack for each unchained monster in your graveyard. I mean, you can only use each effect once a turn, as you see, as zero attack. Uh, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, immediately after this card resolves, link summon one dark link monster you control with that monster as well. So basically, you, when this thing's down field, you can quick effect, link with your opponent's monster, and make the link one, uh, link two, which is really, really solid. It also has the fact that if this card is on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, target one unchained monster in your graveyard, except himself, Special summon it. This card is a fantastic one of in a deck. I will say this it is Kevin DD Crow, but you only want it as a one of because it's dead in hand. Really, really great card in general, but I wish it had a better ways of getting itself out of hand. But other than that, really, really great card. We also got to talk about the main man himself, Abominable Unchained Soul. Now, this guy is amazing. You can only special summon one Unchained Abominable Soul once a turn. If a card you control is destroyed by battle card effects, special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summon, discard one card, destroy one card in the field, non-targeting. And it wants to turn during the end phase. If this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed on the field this turn, special summon one, uh, special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. A very, very powerful card, and it is a must of two of in the deck. Very, very powerful, and really, really good in general. Another tech card that I really like is uh, her. She is... An amazing card. If you don't know, uh, this is one of the Fleur cards. We got all this back, I think, a year, year or two ago. We got this back when Baron de Fleur came out as its own archetype. But uh, basically what this card does is target one, uh, one monster you control and one card on the field. Special summon this card from your field. And if you do, destroy them. If this card is sent from your hand or field to the graveyard, target one other monster in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck. And then add one plant monster. Or one add one level one plant monster from your deck to graveyard. You only use each effect of this card once a turn. We're not playing any level one plants. We're just playing this because it has an effect where you destroy a monster on the field and destroy a card your opponent controls. Special summon it. It's a 2900 level eight, allowing us to make some rank eight plays, which is really, really cool. And also disrupt our opponent. I really like it. It's definitely a cool tech option. You don't have to play this card. But I really want to test it out, so that's why I would Alright, so now we're done talking about the level 8, let's talk about the level 3. So if you don't know, Unchains are broken up between the level 8s and the level 3s. This one's probably the most powerful. We have Unchained Twin Sarama. Sarama is really, really powerful. Basically, it has a fet where you can target one Unchained monster in your graveyard, except herself. And if you do, set the card. And if you do, destroy one card you control. And if this card on the field is destroyed by card effect, except untrained sarama or by battle so basically what this card is saying is that it was destroyed by card effect by besides itself which i believe i'm misunderstanding what this card says uh special one unchained monster from your hand or deck except untrained twin sarama don't use each effect once per turn really really powerful monster and it's a must of three of a deck we're also playing three of this guy this guy is amazing this is unchained twins blue i like to call him He's really, really powerful. Basically, he's a quick effect on field. Target one card you control, destroy it. You are locked into fiends for the rest of the turn. And then if this card on the field is destroyed by a battle or card effect, if you do, special summon one unchained monster from your hand or deck, except himself. Really, really powerful card. It is a once per turn, but hey, it gets any monster from the deck, which is really, really solid. We also got to talk about Aurora. Now, this guy is also amazing. Now, you could special summon him from the hand, by destroying uh, one targeted card on the field, which is really, really solid. So he's a free special summon. And then he also has a fact when he's destroyed, he floats into any one of them, as long as he's destroyed by battle or card effect. Really, really powerful card. 
Uh, this is all the monster lineup. Let's go on to the spells and traps. All right, so for the spells, we're playing three Ecole de Zone. Now, you've probably never even seen this card before. This is Pack Filler, but I think it's a really, really interesting card. So basically, it's a Floodgate Field spell, and which kind of synergizes with this deck, and I'll explain. So if this card, uh, if the turn player special summons exactly one monster, destroy it. And if you do, the controller of that monster special summons one mass token, spell caster dark link one level one to their field which can't be attacked directly the attack and defense is equal to the destroyed monster but only use each effect once a turn so the whole gimmick of this deck is that you want to pop off on your turn have this on field and then when your cards get destroyed that's fine because your deck's okay with floating all your monsters float when they're destroyed by card effects but your opponent's monsters aren't so while this king's on field, every time they summon exactly one monster, it blows it up and gives them a token. Against Cash Tira, that is a death sentence. They have nothing to use that token for, and it doesn't even matter they link it away because the link monster is counted as a summon, thus the link monster will blow up and it'll just get the token all over again. So they can't get rid of this card unless without, without spell and trap removal, meaning they're always stuck with infinite tokens they don't know what to do with. So this is a really, really powerful card. I think if you go first, make a board, and then place this card, or activate, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's that trap card? Metaverse, and place this during your opponent's turn. If you're going against cashed tier, they just auto lose to this card, which is really, really cool. It kind of just keeps blowing up their cash tiers, which is very hilarious. Uh, we're also playing Abomination Prison. This card is an amazing card. Basically, it has an effect where you add one unchained card from your deck to hand. And then if this card is sent to graveyard, uh, basically sent to, to graveyard by card effect, it's destroyed by card effect. Special summon one unchained monster from your deck. You only use each effect once a turn. Really, really powerful Rota, and it's a must of three of the deck. We're also playing one Call by the Grave and one Avarice because we go through our monsters so much. Sometimes you kind of just run out of monsters in the main deck. You kind of just want to shuffle them back. That includes the Link monsters as well. So I like one Pot of Avarice is because it's a really, really solid one of. Uh, now it's time to talk about Trap Cards because this is a control deck. Now there's two versions you can play this deck. You can play it as a beatdown control deck where you go second and try to control the game that way. Or you try to go first and control it that way. This is a control first version. If you want to go second, I recommend not playing this or this because these cards do not help you going second. Uh, well, like this one kind of does. It does pop up a card on your opponent's field. But there's stronger cards you can play like the Kaiju Slumber and a whole Kaiju package. Which is a really, really recommended choice if you're trying to go second with this deck. Because your monsters will float when you Dark Hole yourself. Or Kaiju Slumber yourself. Their monsters won't. Uh, we play three Escape uh, the Unchained. This card is amazing. Basically, target one Unchained monster you control and one card on a field. Destroy them both. If this card is set, is destroyed by card effects, you special them one Unchained monster from your deck. Really, really powerful card, especially when you can bro destroy it with your own effects, which is really, really great. We're also playing three Unchained uh, Chamber. This card is also amazing. Special or one unchained monster from your hand or graveyard. If this card is the set card is destroyed by card effects, special summon one unchained monster from your deck. Really, really powerful card as well. Uh, we're even playing three heavy storm duster because we just really want to destroy these cards in particular. Uh, you can cut this out as well, depending on your matchup. But it's also good against spell and trap decks. If your opponent's playing field spells or they're playing cards that like like to set back row. This is kind of our removal to it. Not only it also pops our own card. So it's never really dead. And I like it as a good three right, So that's the reason why I play Heavy Duster. Just because I like it against back row decks. Because Labyrinth and other archetypes are still in this game. Trap Tricks as well. And this kind of shits on them as well. And we're also playing three Torrential Tribute. Because our deck does not care about Torrential Tribute. All our monsters float besides this guy. And uh, it's just a really, really powerful card. I like to play two Metaverse. If you want, you can play three. If you really want to flug at your opponent with this card. I think it's a really, really cool tech option that no one's playing. And I think it's a very, very powerful card. And then finally, we play three Trap Trick. If you want, you can cut it down to two Trap Trick and play three Metaverse. But that is really it for the main deck. I do want to discuss Trap Trick real quick because we are getting a new card in May that actually works better than Trap Trick. 
So I believe it's a new Trap Trick like card, but it requires you to destroy a monster or destroy a card you control to activate it. Thus, it floats really well with this whole archetype, allowing you to destroy their monsters and float, which is really, really cool. So I definitely want to see that card in action, but I don't think that comes out until May, so we'll have to see there. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the main deck. Let's go on to the action. All right, so this is another card I just want to mention real quick. This is a Mudkipper of, from the Underworld. This is a very, very powerful card. Uh, I don't think this version of the deck uses this card best, but there's other versions of this deck that are coming out in the future that will make Mudcracker really, really good, especially the Tour Guide the Underworld and Sangan. There's some really, really cool plays that I wish I could show off in a future video. But uh, this card has huge potential, just the fact it's, it locks in the Fiends. It's a Fiend Link 2 at Foolish Burials, which is a really, really strong effect. So I highly recommend this card in the future, but for now it's just a one-off. We're also playing 3 Soul of Rage. This card has some of the coolest artwork of all time. If you don't know, this whole archetype is based on Hakai, which is the, way, the Japanese word for destruction, which is really, really solid. So basically this card says, during your opponent's main phase quick effect, Target one monster that was special summoned and your opponent controls. Immediately after this effect resolves, special summon one link monster using this card as material and that monster. Really, really solid effect right there, allowing you to link some of your opponent's monsters, which is really, really great. I mean, if this card is on the field, is destroyed by a card effect. Target one fiend monster in your graveyard, except himself, add it to your hand. Really, really powerful card. It is a must of three of the deck. This card is amazing and is powerful. Another beautiful card here is Unchained Soul of Anguish. Uh, this is a Link 3 monster. It requires two monsters, including an Unchained Soul. So basically him plus an opponent's monster. And basically what he does is that you target one face of monster your opponent controls. Immediately after this card resolves, Link summon one dark monster. So the same effect. Line use to your opponent's monsters as Link material. And then if this card is destroyed by battle card effects, target one theme monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. A really, really great card, and is also a must of three of the deck. Very, very great. And finally, we have our big boy himself, Unchained Abomin Abomination. This card is your boss monster. It requires three monsters, so him plus our opponent's monster. And basically, he has three effects. If this card, uh, if cards on the field is destroyed by card effect, except himself, this target one card on the field, destroy it. When a monster is destroyed during the battle, target one card on the field, destroy it. During the end phase, can target one card on the field, destroy it. You can only use each effect once a turn. This card destroys everything. And this is a really, really powerful monster. 3k body, leg 4, and it helps you get all your plays started. It is a must of 2 of the 3 of in the deck. And that is it really it for the main deck. There's other extra deck conclusions you can include, including some cool XYZs. As long as they're fiends and you don't lock yourself too early, you can make some really, really cool plays there. All right, some other great monsters that you can play that don't fiend lock you. We got the Cerberus, of course, the Phoenix, and of course, the Unicorn. Really, really powerful cards. And that leaves us with two slots remaining. You can play whatever you want in these two slots. Any rank 8 fiend monster you feel like. Or you could just play any other matter of lake monsters. There's a whole world to choose from. I highly recommend exploring. But that's really all I got for this video. I hope you all enjoy. See you all in the next one. And don't do anything stupid. Bye-bye. <laughs>